Put well, is it gorgeous, Chris? Is the shot gorgeous? Is it how we like it, Chris? You know how we like it. It's fucking, this is episode 67. <sighs> Thank God. We don't want to see our legs. We want to look cozy. We want to be centered. Stop <sighs> looking at me. Marker. I've never looked at you in my life. I need some coffee for this. <laughs> look at my nails, though. I know, you texted me photos of those. Can you see them, Chris? <sighs> Okay, it's a big reveal episode. If you're not watching on YouTube, I don't know what you're doing with your life. But Losers! Lizzie has made questionable decisions. No, I have not. She has uh, gone against my authority. What are you, Cartman? <laughs> well, should I look and then we'll discuss? Yeah, my arm's getting tired. Chris, are you good on your photo? Or your photo? <laughs> Do you have a picture lock? Yeah. Okay. Okay, because I can't hold my arm up anymore. It's so oh, cute. Oh my god. You love it. Well, I have hold on, let me just really register. Lizzie had a, a breakdown this weekend. No, I had a breakthrough. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is that what's going on? Yeah. I did I am curious, so Lizzie has changed her hair. Yes, it's pink. <sighs> she matched. But it's like lazy girl pink. So this will grow out and I won't have to do anything about it. <laughs> it's not like when I like went green, because like green you can't grow out. <laughs> you just it just turns Okay, I'm, I'm processing. I yeah. don't not like it. From what you had sent me, I really thought I would not like it. But for some reason, I signify big hair changes or wanting to do a big hair change with something psychological. So what was the shift or the breakthrough? See, and that's something that I have a problem with. And I was talking about this with my hairdresser, Margie October, at so Spellbound she, Salon last she, night. She feels <laughs> the same way then. No. I, so <laughs> I've... I have been a person who likes dyeing my hair different colors. When I was a little girl, I would take Crayola markers and I would color my hair strands for hours so I could see what it looked like blue and green and like all these things. And it was never an expression of an emotional distress for me. Right. It was just like fun and it didn't matter. Like my hair is going to grow back. It doesn't, it doesn't. I'm not saying it has to be distressed. No, I know, but I do think. It could also be a playful time in your life or I, like your. Yeah. I mean, but I do think a lot of people in society are like, oh, that person's going through a breakdown. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it's like, and when I dyed my hair purple, when I was in sixth grade, a teacher was like, are you okay? And I was like, I was until you asked me that. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, I don't know. Normalize dyeing your hair ran randomly on a, on a whim. No, I think it looks good. And why not? You only live once. YOLO! If, if it brings you joy, it brings you joy. It is sparking such joy. I just thought it was funny because over the weekend, she starts sending me 15 photos of well, different people's hair. Well, because my friend Kate hair. was like, fuck that. You're not doing your hair pink. But Kate came around this morning. She did. Yeah. She likes it. Yeah. Is well, she lying to you? No, because she, uh, she was doing that thing where she's like, I don't know, like whatever well, i don't know so and then this morning she said okay your hair is a vibe your girl came through because this is what i captured in the vehicle on the way here oh wow yeah she fucking it in the sunlight in the natural sunlight it is a whole fucking sherbert buffet okay i'm gonna be honest i didn't know how the pink was gonna take to the red because all the well, inspiration like photos that you sent were uh blonde haired women so that's not true one of them was a gingy no they were that was you you said you said <laughs> i sent a picture of me too and i said well that doesn't make me be able to vision you in pink but i said it was a no for me just because i remember the green and i said do whatever makes you happy like if it's calling to you go do it i just don't want to hear you complain about the horrors of it going wrong the green was a nightmare because it never it would not leave me alone and you did it yourself and i did it myself so this we like did a bleach balayage and then pink on top so the pink will fade and then i'll just have like a nice sun kissed well and she did a good job I well will margie's admit. literally the fucking best and did you get a little chop chop too i got a big chop chop i can tell i did like three inches off and i like this little fit you've got going on too I, this is my meeting outfit are you going on a meeting after this no i just wanted to wear all black because oh. i thought it would make the hair pop mm. <laughs> I like it. And what I did Joe too. think? What was his reaction? Joe likes it. Did you tell him? No. Beforehand? No. Oh my gosh. Literally, one of my things I was thinking we could talk about today. Yeah. Um I I put like conversation starters because I was watching a random vlog of somebody who went and like changed their they got a pretty big tattoo without having told their significant other. And I don't mm -hmm. think it's a rule that you need to get permission from no, anyone like, for your body. Yeah. But for me personally, if I was going to do a big altering change to my body, I would probably just tell, I'm not asking for his permission, right, but, but I'm telling tell him. him. Yeah. So you didn't tell Joe. No. And you just walked but in. But I do that thing that I do where I'm like, I'm going to come home looking different. 
hint. Like, <laughs> you might not recognize me. <laughs> like, who is she? Is it your wife? Do you want to play the stranger? <laughs> you couldn't even keep it from me. She said to me. <laughs> She was in the hair chair on Instagram, and I said, oh my gosh, what are you doing? And I didn't want an actual response. And but she then knew why that. ask? <laughs> well, I don't remember how the actual conversation no, went. No, you literally were like, tell me you're doing pink or something. And I said, I'm doing pink. And you're like, don't tell me. <laughs> Is that really how I sound to you? Honestly, it's how you sound to everyone, Chris. No, I don't. Liar. Oh, no. I said, you were in the hair chair, and I said, hmm, I wonder if I'm going to see pink tomorrow. Oh. And then she sends me a photo, like a like a, a, an adventurous girl, and she said, we go and see pink tomorrow. We're doing pink now. And I said, don't tell me that. <laughs> Keep it a surprise. <laughs> Anyways. Um. Uh, speaking of not being able to keep surprises, I'm going to tell a story that's none of my business. But it's very funny. In regards to who? In regards to one of my best friends. Okay. So one of my best friends ha is with a man who's who like the more I get to know him, the more I'm like, oh, he's me. <laughs> like he's very me. So the other night, and I'm not gonna like say which friend it is, so that there's like some anonymity. Mm -hmm. But the other night, he went out to the bars and he came home and he had left his keys inside the house, so he couldn't get into the house and it was freaking cold and so he's like banging on the door it's like three o'clock in the morning she's asleep he's like calling her relentlessly he's outside for 45 minutes literally on the brink of death from exposure so cold <laughs> when she finally realizes he's out there so she goes to get him and he's like cold and he's like drunk and he's like i want to tell you something because i thought i was gonna die out there and i don't want you to be mad at me for telling you but i just want to show you this thing because i can't keep it to myself it's so cool and she's like what he shows her her fucking engagement ring. What? <laughs> he goes, I got your engagement ring That's yesterday and it's so sick I just have to show you. <laughs> All drunk and cold. <laughs> and it's fucking stunning. <laughs> and it's the funniest, sweetest thing I've ever heard. And I think it's a perfect story. They are not officially engaged, but she is wearing the ring and he's going to propose <laughs> in a different way later. But like he still got down on one knee and he's like, I feel like if I'm gonna show you this, I should do it this way. So he got down on one knee and he's like, I love you, like all this stuff. <laughs> he's like <laughs> he's and like, but I'm gonna do it better. Don't be mad. This I just want to show it to you because it's so sick. And it's so sick. And was she into it? Obviously, like, it's a sweet gesture, but yeah. is there any part of her that's upset that the surprise was ruined, or is she just so excited it doesn't matter? I feel like people who are friends with me are okay with that kind of behavior. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, if your man's going to do that to you, it's like, you're cool with it if you're cool with me. Uh -huh. Like, like for example, Shannon, recently, the woman who's getting married who I tried to ruin her engagement. Yeah. I'm one of her bridesmaids. I don't know if we've said that on the pod, but I'm one of her bridesmaids. And, like, I'm the bridesmaid who's always like, hi, Shannon, it's me again. So here's the problem I'm having with your entire fucking wedding. I think it should be a navy blue theme. Like, all this of just being awful. And then at the end of it, I'm like, you know what, Shannon? Don't worry about any of this. I shouldn't have even called you. I shouldn't have even put this on your plate. Like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, do you regret making me part of your wedding party? She's like, Lizzie, you straight up ruined my proposal. I knew what I was getting into when I asked you to be one of my bridesmaids. Mm. I'm like, I love you. And that, yeah. <laughs> Shannon also just got her hair done by Margie. Looks great. Is it pink? No. Does her? Yeah, okay. And are we going <laughs> to disclose that you uh, tried to ruin the bachelorette party as well? Or are we going to keep that under the radar? We were, we were going to keep that out of the room. There reason, <laughs> like, there was a reason why I was just so nondescript. You know what I mean? Like, there was a, those, those were intentional words. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. Hmm. 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 But the, see, see, I ruin surprises and you ruin lives. So, <laughs> that's why we're friends. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Well, while we're on the topic of looks and your hair, I thought I could bring up um, you dragging me this past week. What did I do? Uh, hmm. Do you have beef with my outfits? Oh, yeah. Okay. Act like this is dragging you. I'm doing you a you fucking are favor, dragging you me. loser. You're dragging no, me. No, no. You Sometimes a bitch needs to be dragged. Recently, I'm not sure if you guys noticed in the headlines, but our friend, <laughs> friend of the pod, friend of the pod, Jeffrey Alexander Starr, just kidding, I don't know his middle name, Jeffrey Lynn Starr has released a skincare line, mm -hmm. which I, Fabulous. and he had a launch party, weird, weird situation, 
I didn't get my invite. It as must have been not. like lost in the mail or something, as Jeffrey. It's whatever. It's fine. I still love you. Can't wait to try it. Um, are you mad at me? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Our friend here, our beautiful friend, our fearless leader, Ryland fucking Adams, goes to a Jeffree Star launch event in a fucking hoodie and a Patagonia jacket. I also talked about this with my hairdresser last night. That is a wild fucking choice. Yeah. That is an embarrassing fucking way to represent this <laughs> podcast and yourself in public, specifically at an event that is full of people who have spent millions of dollars on their fucking physical appearances, from their toes to their fingers to their noses, and you show up in a Patagonia jacket? You know what? I just feel like, yes, I was the most underdressed person there. <laughs> I And <clears throat> I know Jeffrey is going to dress, is going to go all the way out. Yeah. But I didn't know we were showing up to the VMAs. Literally every It's a person... launch party. What do you, How do you <sighs> not know? You've known this man for everybody... This man is a notorious fucking... Okay, but it was on a rooftop, mm -hmm. and that it was cold last week. Right. And I thought, oh, I'm going to need something warm. <laughs> and I would rather be warm than be fashionable. And in my opinion, it's just like, what do you expect from me? Hey. All of my vlogs, 95% of my vlogs are me before I've done anything to my hair in a gym t-shirt. It's like, how do you think I'm going to show up anywhere? I mean, you're a beautiful man, though. Here's what we should do. If we're not going to Universal after this, I think we should take Chris and go to the mall and get you something that you can <sighs> wear out that's not fucking embarrassing. You know, I love shopping for anything but clothing. Let's for just get you a couple of staple items that you can wear wear when you get invited to things like Jeffree Star fucking beauty launches so that you don't look like a weird dad in public like that. Is it weird that I wasn't even that embarrassed? Because I just That's a like... red fucking flag. You need to take some pride. You are a gay cultural icon and you cannot be out in these streets wearing a fucking Patagonia puffer jacket that's not even... You have a Gucci snow jacket. You have Gucci snow boots. Okay, in my defense... There is no reason for you to be in public looking like that. In my defense... You looked like a dad driving his daughter to a party to to sleep in the fucking parking lot and wait for her to call him and say she's ready to go home. <laughs> You're the dad that Shane should have left in the fucking car that night. Oh, I love you. Only your friends will tell you. I know this is being harsh and nasty and the commenters and the audience is going to be like, she's a nasty bitch and her hair's stupid. <laughs> but, you know. No, I appreciate the They're lying. <laughs> and I've been thinking about it for myself anyways because I have this same shirt in 10 colors and that's all I wear. And even when I got up this morning, I was like, wow, I've worn this shirt on the podcast 400 times. And in my defense, when we left from Colorado, my priority were my animals. Right. And I packed a half a suitcase of my own right. clothing. And so I, I don't have clothes that. here. I figured that. But I, I also figured if you were going to go to a fucking launch event, <laughs> you would go and buy a shirt. When you were working for Clever, we used to go and get you shit all the time the night before a shoot. I know, but and we I'm were different poor now. then. We I'm were different. You're rich now. Like there's a difference. <laughs> like we should be going shopping now. <laughs> I just hate. Maybe I need to find a stylist. If you're a stylist out there, I'm looking. I'm for sitting some right help. here, and I have offered to take him shopping. <laughs> I don't want to go shopping. If you show, I'll give you a budget, no, and you can shopping. go shopping. I don't want. I don't want to. Let's get some wetzel pretzel and some lemonade. <sighs> I hate them all. Not with me, you don't. Okay. I'll go. Well, yeah. With, well, mm, well. Everyone. And I have a gift card for Abercrombie. We should go. I'll go to Abercrombie. I hear all the rage about Abercrombie. You're not so going to get something to wear to a premiere at Abercrombie. We just need to get you like a nice black pant and like a nice black shirt. That's I didn't... unrecognizable. You can wear it over and over and over. Well, I just didn't realize his launch event was going to be more beautiful than every wedding I've been to besides I mean, yours. I mean, mine was whatever. Mine was yours like... was so perfectly you. Though. Yeah, there wasn't. I didn't have like a whimsical wedding though. And this was like balloons and roses and flowers yeah, by no Jeff Lee you're Hong. talking about the man who sent you a fucking rose wall uh, it was i can't <laughs> believe you go in there like clueless like i didn't who could have known jeffrey was gonna go all out <laughs> well you know i just uh, i don't feel like i am a part of the like fashion forward world and everyone that showed up to that party is very much yeah. so that but i had a great time regardless right i got a glass of wine and, and i you. just yeah. moseyed my little butt around that yeah party. you looked happy and confident which is half the battle <laughs> Well, I think you just have to be authentically you and I'm yeah. not authentically me in what all of those other people were wearing. And I'm not talking about stretching your comfort. I'm literally just talking about getting you something that you can be warm and attractive in. Okay. I think Mario Lopez does it well. I watched him guest host yeah. Alan. He does like elevated, nice, but like not too fancy. Yeah. So I just need to find some uh, minimal fashion inspiration men and follow suit. Yeah. And you have like a cute fucking body. Thanks. 
Whatever. It's not working for me lately. Oh, what's wrong with it? More butt stuff? No, my butt stuff has come to an end, but now my body's breaking out in hives. Like, what? I'm so <gasps> itchy and hivey oh, and it. rashy. What's going and on? And I this? have no idea what's going can on. Can I see your tummy? It's never ending. <sighs> Let's see. Oh, baby. Look at that. It's all, it's just like, and I itch Were everywhere. you out in the sun? I did get in the pool yesterday. So do you think it's just did like- Did you rinse the, off afterwards? Uh, no, I did some stupid boy crap. And it, as soon as I got out of the pool in the sun, I went and worked out and sweat. That might be why. And then I took my dogs on a walk. Did you put lotion on your body? Are you dry right now? Yeah. This might be from the chlorine and then working out. I think so too. I think it was my own choices. But then, so prior to that, this weekend I went to the dermatologist oh. I had to get my moles checked because you know yeah. you me and my family we have a history we of... do be moly cancerous girls <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I haven't gotten my moles checked in quite a while which is not good if you need to get your checkups actually schedule them we were actually holding what did you, did you go to your appointment oh what was I supposed to make an appointment for my hoo-ha because Lizzie was like, oh, I'm, something was hurting her. And she said, I need to make an appointment. And I said, I've been putting off my mole appointment forever. I said, let's both do it today. Yeah, so I think I was supposed to book on. a gynecological appointment. I did not do that. Well, <laughs> but I've, I did get my hair done. <laughs> I followed through with my butt and my dermatology. <laughs> and anyways, I just, so she's looking through my body. She's seeing what's going on around there. And she goes, oh, this one needs to be removed. But I didn't know that meant in this moment right now, she yeah. was removing the mole from my body. And yeah. she's just like, sticks a shot in my back. And then this girl walks up with a consent form. And I thought I didn't have time to not consent because it was all happening well, so quickly. And they're going to, they're going to like check it right like send it to a lab okay. yeah but then i just it all happened so fast and then she's carving out my back and it felt great while this while the numbing stuff was in effect yeah, and but then now it's not cool yeah for three days i've just yeah. been like <laughs> i'm sorry and it doesn't I've, feel good yeah so i wonder if i'll ever be back to normal but other than that i've been having a great time yeah every time they do me they're like this doesn't even work on redheads anyways and they, and i'm just like why do all of you fucking say that you know i've heard it you, because all of you fucking say it to me every time you see a redhead you're like this is gonna hurt extra <laughs> why like why say it you know what i mean really? give me the placebo effect you know what i'm saying like this will extra work this is a special one i use for redheads do you we, know what I mean? Like trick me into it or something. Do we want to talk about your discovery in my bathroom the other day or leave that off the table? I, to be completely honest, have stopped taking my brain pills. So I don't what? know what you're talking about. What? I haven't been taking them. Why? So I just keep forgetting. Oh. And then the brain fog is worse. And then I'm like, oh, I've forgotten because I'm forgetting because I don't take them. It's a weird cycle. I'm going to take them when I get home. I hope. Check in on me. <laughs> 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 what did I find in your bathroom? Well, uh, what did I find in there? I mean, it's nothing bad, but I don't know if it's mean for me to expose. You were peeing in my oh, bathroom. Oh, it's the way you're saying it that's confusing well, to me. Well, because I didn't know if this was like redhead rude. I don't think it is. Okay. I mean, it's only to you. So if you found it rude, then I it don't think rude. it's rude. I did have a moment of self-discovery in Ryland's bathroom <laughs> after the podcast last week. <laughs> and what's funny is because like I usually pee with the door open while he sits at the computer so if we want to talk we could talk we both do that it's normal and but this time i had shut the door because quite frankly like i needed a break from honey and uno like kissing me while i was going pee pee so i stand i'm standing by the the sink in the bathroom and there just a nice light bounce comes off of the white wall in the backyard and reflects back into the room so you get like a nice natural bright light and for the first time in my entire life i realized i have ginger pubes Wow. I thought I had like calico pubes, like brown and like yellow and like, or like white and like a little bit of like blonde, yellow and white are not the right words. I have blonde, like blonde, like calico cat. <laughs> She's a full bred ginger. Yeah. I had no idea. Wow. <laughs> it's <was> wild. <laughs> wow. You brought it up. You said, should we tell him what you found? No, I know interesting response you're having to something that you, pre <laughs> you prefaced okay um did you want to talk about your mom oh i mean i'm like, like i'm starting to forget the way that she says it but my mom has a gay best friend also <gasps> and she keeps telling me like you know when your husband dies like it'll just be you and oh ryland like it's <laughs> just me and brad and i'm like i don't 
think you understand how this works. Like Brad, I was like, she's like, I'll marry Brad when Jared dies. And I'm like, why is she like, manifesting Jared's death? Yeah, it's like, first of all, if Jared dies, you die. <laughs> like, I'm not living in a world where my stepdad's not around to care for you. Mm-hmm. And second of all, Brad's fucking gay. Like, you're not going to marry Brad because Brad's like in love with men. And she's like, and you'll marry Ryland. And I was just like, no, Ryland also won't marry me. And I wouldn't marry Ryland because I'm not gay. And you're married. And I'm married. Oh, we're assuming Joe's dead. Right. In this <laughs> scenario, Joe is dead. And, and guess, Shane is dead. And you and I. Dead to me. Right. And we're just, we're the last two standing. So we're like, you know what? Let's get married. We could procreate. I mean, it's not working out with Shane and I. Naturally. It's not. Oh, here's big news. Oh. I decided to have a child. Yes. Well, uh, you know, I, I, I'm ecstatic for you, but it's just so far away. No. Oh, sorry. Okay. You tell your news and then I'll react. I decided to have my firstborn son on the 4th of July in 2024. And I said, who are you? Kylie Jenner? Yes. How are you planning <laughs> the exact date and why I'm going to conceive in September 2023. Okay. And then my firstborn son will be born on the 4th of July, which is kind of a cool thing to say. And But why do you want the 4th of July? We love America. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> There's that movie Born on the 4th of July. Joe has the tattoo 74 1774. Uh-huh. No, 1776. Right? I said uh-huh like I knew what I was talking about. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's Independence Day. Well, no, I before I well, the first one was wrong, you said. It was. Okay. But I'm saying blindly, I just said uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I also I love it. So my son Scott will be born on the 4th of July 2024. Okay. Scott. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And is Joe committed to this as well? Yes. Joe Joe loves the plan. Okay. Hopefully I can match that time. I think you can. I think that's enough time for you to match. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. And then Kate's going to have her. She's going to start trying in March of next year. Chris is so happy for you. (laughs) Thank you, Chris. (laughs) I've also just conceded like God's going to give me boys. It's fine. All my girlfriends get girls. I'll be a boy mom. Why don't you want boys? I guess I don't. See, I would have a great time with boys. Like, I love the little boys I used to babysit who are men now. Mm-hmm. Um, So I would have a great time with boys. But like all my friends have girls and it's so it's like such a fun girl party. Right. I genuinely don't think I have a preference. Yeah. Like I could be so happy either way. I think that too. But I think because I'm such a narcissist, it's like I want a mini me daughter. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, that I, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well. Anything else you want to talk about? Oh, no. But I think that your next little talking point is pretty exciting. We're not like other podcasts. Oh. We're different. Yeah, we're not like other podcasts. No, we're not like other podcasts. I'm not on I'm not on the Twitter, but I guess (laughs) not either. (laughs) Who showed you this? Well, Shane had seen it, like somebody repost it on Instagram somewhere, but I guess there was a tweet that kind of went viral about somebody saying, I'm sick of two best friends having a podcast where they agree on everything and blah blah blah. And like, yes, we are really good friends. Yeah. But I guess the first reply was you should check out the sip with Ryan and (laughs) Lucy. Did you just decide to not call us best friends? Well, yeah, I did because then it like, <laughs> you have 10 best friends and you've already exposed that I'm fifth on your call list when you want to talk. No, you're third and it's only because I know you're busy. Right. And you say, don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're the pod. We're not friends. <laughs> but when I'm out in the world, I say my best friend, Ryland. No, you are my best friend. I mean, I don't have many others. Thank you. It really feels like I'm just getting it because there's no one else there right now. And that kind of like hurts a little bit. <laughs> I'll grow on you. <laughs> no, you. Ha- no, I'm, I'm gonna saying you have to make you love me. See, I have grown on you. You get it. Do well, you want no. a little chin stroke? Do you uh, like we that? Always, we always <laughs> joke that like, oh, we have no friends, or all of our friends left us. But honestly, everything that has transpired in my life has been for the best. And I think sometimes things happen in your life for you to like realize what's best for you. And I think yes. even as you get a little bit older, as you come into your 30s or your late 20s, your friend group. Uh, gets smaller and smaller to begin with because you get closer with the immediate family you are making so you know what even though you're one of my only friends (laughs) you are my best friend (laughs) thank you and that's the only reason why i'm so upset about the patagonia thing do you do better for yourself no i mean (laughs) no i know where you're coming from and i don't disagree with you right 
It was just a little harsh being the first thing she says when I know it's the truth. (laughs) (laughs) I'm nothing if not too honest. And that's why we're not like other podcasts. No, we're not. Because we don't agree. And that's what I think. I I think I was just such a genius in choosing you as my co-host. Because (laughs) if you hate either one of us, honestly, that's great for the show. Because you're like so passionately agreeing with one side. And honestly, if you're listening to a podcast where both hosts are like, yeah, you're right. I agree. Then it's the, there is no show because right. there's no difference in opinions. And so I like that we fight and I like that we sometimes don't even like each other, best friend. No, I always like you. I'm kidding. I know. Have we ever Well, I would say I would chalk up the dark year to naivete on whose end? Probably mine. Okay, I accept that. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's when you were downing bottles of wine and I didn't identify you as an alcohol dick just yet. No, it was after that. Oh, but I was a drug addict. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I wasn't using alcohol, but I was using drugs. I was a victim of somebody else's. Right. Maybe we should cut this part. (laughs) (laughs) Here we are. We found our way back together. Okay. Before we have to cut for the camera, did you want to tell me why you didn't get Spencer? Oh, yeah. I had, like, what the fuck? Were they whispering the whole movie? What do you mean? She's just whispering the whole time. Well, see. Uh, What did your mommy get you from the gas station? (laughs) It's a lobster. Oh, yes, General Sol, it's a lobster. I hate pea soup. (laughs) I hate it. Charles, why would you get me the same pearls as another woman? And I'm just like Well do you know enough of the story Because like I had I mean I know enough of the story To know that choosing to whisper Is an interesting stylistic (laughs) choice But also like Could we get like a stage whisper Like I want to hear some of those movies I didn't have trouble hearing her Also that opening shot That's like 25 minutes Of just like the big wide field And then eventually you realize like Oh there's a bunch of cars coming through But it's like a whole Uh you know, sure. Slow burn's a word for it. Um, <laughs> it's a slow burn, but I enjoyed it. And I-, I was shocked that you enjoyed it because a friend of mine at my other job was like, oh, I don't get Spencer. Like, I could not sit through it. And I was like, really? Because my friend who doesn't really get movies really liked it. <laughs> like, I was like, my best friend, Ryland Adams, who does not get film or television, has the attention span that is so short he couldn't even sit through Marry Me. <laughs> Could not. Loved Spencer. So I feel like it's more mainstream than it's given credit. And this guy looked at me like, you're dumb. Like, no, it's not, it's a very hard Who's dumb? It was nominated for awards. Well, I mean, I'm dumb. That's what, it, that's what I was saying. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And um, I guess I need to remember that any, usually movies that are nominated for awards are going to just be so f- goddamn fucking boring. Well, like, that's what, yeah. I mean, they give good performances. The stories Christi- are there. She was, her her acting was phenomenal. <sighs> Amazing. And the whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, this is about the year that she was dating that married man and Robert at the same time. Well, and I felt. She's the Charles. <laughs> But she's whispering and she's sick of being caught. I fell in love with her in that role because I thought she was so brilliant in it. And then watching her talk about how they approach the role, how they're not really projecting, but they're kind of using. I just thought it was very well done. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Great performance. Great whisper performance. <laughs> um, it could be an ASMR person's <laughs> dream. Put those headphones on and you're yeah. ready to go. I was just sitting like, what? Let me see. What did she say? Um, oh, Morgan said that she will come join your love is blind nonsense. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so we'll be back. We'll be back with Morgan. So last time I was here, I was talking I'm about wrong. snails. That's right. Love darts. <laughs> oh, my God. Are your snails? Hold yeah. on. Oh, wait. Hold on. Let Chris. Okay, are what? your snails still alive? <laughs> yeah. How are I your put snails? them up for adoption in my neighborhood, and now they're outdoor snails. One take two, be What does that really mean? Does that mean your snails are dead, dude? <laughs> No, because every so often they'll come back to life. They are always half dead. I always think they're dead and I'm like, what do I do with them? And then they move. So uh-huh. do you still have a snail aquarium sitting in your apartment? Yeah. And so Marcus just has to smell it all the time. Oh. Oh. With snails inside? I don't know if this is what we want to talk about. <laughs> is I'm Marcus uncomfortable watching with the, the snails? Well, I don't want to talk about my life as an animal caretaker because <laughs> I've decided that I just am not fit. <laughs> you're an unfit snail mother <laughs> all of her animals have five homes like she does yeah i don't have a home what a none of my animals have a home we're kind of all just like what would you call it a nomad yeah 
Yeah. And I'm I, li- I go wherever the wind takes me. And I think my new life is I'm just going to live wherever Ryan and Shane decide that they don't live <laughs> for that month. Oh my Seriously. gosh, you're going to switch houses with us <laughs> yeah. as we go to Colorado in the summer. <laughs> You'll switch places with us. It doesn't seem like a bad deal to me. No. no. She's taking care of our house in Colorado very See, nicely. I'll just be a professional. I'm going to retire and become a professional house sitter for them. Oh my gosh. I love that for you, honestly. I can Hell yeah. Have you Swiffered though? No. Not not to be so boring, but there is this interesting thing you can get on Amazon that's <laughs> fairly cheap and you can just sweep your dog hair into it. And it just goes oh, Well, when they're oh. gone, the dog hair is kind of disappears. Oh, that's right. You don't have the dogs. However, I don't know how to explain to when like when people come over and they're like, Is this your house? <laughs> I'm like, uh Are I'm you just... throwing parties at our house? Yeah. No, because I know that there's probably a camera somewhere. There's cameras everywhere. <laughs> Ryland's always sending me pictures of myself like in my own bed sleeping. He's like, oh. I know, I know. I'm like, you're this. sleeping? Shane is totally the type of person that would have like a camera, but you didn't know where it was. Like the one that we had in the outlet at one time. Oh yeah, didn't Shane buy a shit ton of fake cameras? Oh, but that was for a conspiracy video. We're not just like <laughs> looking at people when uh-huh. they don't know. We're looking at uh-huh. them unless they're coming onto our property. But no, I wouldn't like spy on my sister right. at our house. <sighs> I do like your house quite a lot. Well, Lizzie wanted to talk about Love is Blind, and I said, well, I can't talk about Love is Blind because I don't know anything about Love is Blind other than I walked down this morning and Morgan was watching Love is Blind. Yeah, we watched kind of like... He was in for parts of the season finale, but I watched the whole season finale. I also bit all my nails off before I got here, so sorry. Yeah, I know. (laughs) But I think it's just a crazy concept because... but would I get married in six weeks? Maybe. Well, here's the thing. Should I apply? I, know, I wanted to marry Joe in two weeks. I know nothing about the concept of the show other than I walked down and Morgan said Turned this. Him down. Morgan said this was. <laughs> sorry, keep going. Thanks. I'm sorry. You haven't watched the show, but you have a 30 minute thing you want to say about it. <sighs> <laughs> well, Morgan said that somebody had chosen their first person and they said no so they were on their second choice Mm -hmm. and they still got married and i thought i want to see the paperwork spoiler alert well (laughs) yeah there's a lot of people that they ended up with their second choice but do the people that actually marry them know that they're their second choice yes then why would they get married to them well so here's the interesting thing so like a little bit of backtrack if you've been living under a rock and you don't know what love is blind is it is a show where these the people who are dating are in separate pods with paper thin walls so they can hear each other talking but not see each other after like a week long dating period they decide who is their favorite and who they're going to literally propose to sight unseen then they see each other after the proposal and then they date for four weeks and then they get married and at the altar they get to decide whether or not they're going to say i do some say i don't most said i don't yeah the women who are the second choice in this relationship, I think the guy's name is Jarrett. Should I look up their like names? <laughs> yeah, here's what's okay. so funny. Both Morgan and I are like, I don't know any of their fucking names, but I do know Shane's name because he's a fucking psychopath. And they spell it with a Y. Like, why did they need to add a Y into his name? I just want to know the validity of the weddings. So, uh, so is they're the- married, married. They're married, okay. married. There is a couple from last season that is still happily married. Don't know their names either. Okay, how do you but find still out married. their names on like Google? Just do cast season two cast. Well, doesn't matter what their names are. They're all fucking absurd. Isn't it crazy that Shane had the most options out of anyone? Because he is the biggest weirdo in the entire world. If I met him, I would be so afraid that I would run away to another state. He's and that's physically alarming. He looks like Gary Busey during drugs. But he's like aggressive. He's not nice. He's not he's nice. He's very aggressive. There was and one girl sitting there and he couldn't remember what her name was. Well, no, that's literally the woman that he wound up almost marrying spoiler alert she walked away i stand with natalie and i stand with deeps i think they made really good choices for themselves so shane is dating these two girls natalie is the front runner and she's only the front runner for him because she's already expressed that she likes him that's what made her him like her the most that she was like i like you the most and he's like so i like natalie but i also like shayna but shayna won't tell me how she's feeling i don't know if her name's shayna nick and danielle got married nick is the guy who makes his own toothpaste which is fucking weird danielle's a fucking maniac do you remember when i don't think she's a maniac are you kidding (laughs) (laughs) do you remember when he went out without her she's just sensitive no listen to this i think she's a sensitive little soul and i think he's a little aggressive because i'm a little sensitive soul and if someone was that aggressive to me i'd be crying in the club too no she wasn't crying in the club though he decided to go out she decided to stay in she locked herself in a closet and started crying and when he came home she vilified him for going out to an event that was all the couples and that she just elected to not go to do you remember why she didn't go to that i don't 
I tuned out half the episodes. Okay, well, this guy's shake. I didn't like him either. <laughs> Moving on too fast. We need to close the book on one of these relationships, at least. <laughs> so is this Crazy Eyes? No. Crazy Eyes is Shane. Oh. Keep up. Gary Busey ah. Shane. I don't know if anyone's keeping up. Okay, so how long do you No think, one here is, and it's driving me a little crazy. Do you think Danielle and Nick will stay together? I give I it three months. I think Danielle and Nick will stay together as long as Nick doesn't want to be out about his sexuality. I'm not the only one who thinks this, and I'm not saying it in a nasty way. A lot of people have this speculation. I wasn't that interested in them, so every time they came on the screen, I kind of like would close my eyes. I thought that Nick was such an intense person. He is very intense, like scary a little bit. Yeah, and I felt so badly for Danielle because she clearly hates herself and has a lot of unresolved issues and needs therapy. Well, that's what I'm saying, is she's just kind of a little sensitive soul, and I think she needs someone who's a little more gentle. Yeah, it's but when your sensitive soulness like creeps into abusive behavior, which is what she was doing to Nick when he went out and she's like, I don't believe you in my head. I wrote a whole story that is not founded in reality. And right now I'd like to hold you responsible for it. And this is almost like I'm paraphrasing, but she basically said that she's like, but listen, Nick, like I started freaking myself out. So I locked myself in the closet and I started crying and I need you to care about. Well, that. she obviously doesn't feel comfortable with him. So regardless, no, they're not feel, a match. She doesn't feel comfortable with anybody. They're married. He they said, I, they, he said, I do at the aisle and she down like, and she was like walking down. She's like, I don't even know if he's going to say yes, but like, I hope he does. She's like, I'm not at my best, but I hope I am. And I don't understand why they would get married if they're not sure they want to be married though. Isn't do they nuts? sign a crazy contract that they have to show up at the altar? Because if I decided I don't want to marry this psycho, I wouldn't show up at the altar. I do wonder I wouldn't that. get dressed and do the whole thing. I'd right? be I'd send a text and be like, Hey, their whole families are there. Eh, maybe I would do it in person. I mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't do the show though. I hope there's psychological I, check-ins before I don't and think after no, these I think weddings. They probably trap them in a room and make them psychologically crazy. Yeah. Isn't well, that what they do for reality TV? They make them crazier they than they normally would be. them with alcohol. Yep. Mm. They inject them with shit. Some of the women had really beautiful revelations about self-respect and self-esteem, which I really liked. I liked the girl that walked away from shake shake Deep, he yeah. sucked the whole time he was like she's not pretty i don't like her she looks like my aunt and then he wanted to marry her she, and why he, like why because well she's perfect so of course he should want to marry her but he kept saying like i'm not sexually attracted i'm not sexually attracted and even shake's mom said to him she's too good for you she did i'm not on your Mama side came in and said you suck ass and she's yeah. pretty good so she's perfect. count your blessings shaky shake yeah or shake the hell on out or yeah shake it on out the door and then he sucked yeah and then respectfully Deeps, yeah respool maybe not but she was great so she's she was was gonna go and she's gonna find some rich nice daddy to take care of her and yeah. who's not gonna say she looks like my aunt she was also really pretty i know she was really pretty and his first response to her was super sexual like when they meet in the hallway when they see each other face to face for the first time he was grabbing on her ass in such a way that i felt violated yeah that was he like gr like in the crack he was like, like he like literally was like he ripping to her feel ass her butthole. like he was like spreading Rrr. cheeks like literally he's like oh this ass <clears throat> like it was too much but that's how men start they want to be in your ass and then they're like eh, you i gotta remind go. me of my aunt yeah weird but <laughs> when she left her mom came and met her behind and she was like i chose myself mom and her mom was like i know honey I I, okay so they proud. have to tell their parents they're gonna say no before right like are I these think, people actually shocked no i think natalie's mom knew that it was a no and that's why natalie's mom was looking at shane's mom like from the two and a half seconds I saw, I could tell they had the brides do their walkaways five times. They're like, okay, hold that walk. Okay, back up. Do it again. God, can you because, imagine? Well, that's all I was thinking the whole time. Because even before he said, I want to marry you at the altar, she like pauses and they have five seconds of her looking like all ponderous. But oh, you yeah. know she responded immediately. And then they cut oh, in takeaway shots. You can see the producer like off camera being like, Okay, well, can we say that the night before their wedding, he said, I hate you? And you're the worst thing that ever happened to me. <sighs> what? How? I would not show up the next day. And she's Fuck sitting me. in her confessional saying, oh, and I thought this was going to be the happiest day of my life. And I thought, well, then you obviously don't know this person at all. No. And that is the thing with this show. If you're signing up, you really don't know who somebody is until you've lived with them. Yeah. yeah. Do they run background checks? They have to. I know that they have to because, well, this is dark, but there was a dating show where they didn't run a background check. And this guy literally wound up murdering someone and like stuffing her in a suitcase. It's a whole true crime <sighs> thing. But yeah, they do background checks now. Wow. Well, Love is Blind sounds great. 
Well, love is he wasn't it's, a love is blind murderer. <laughs> oh my god, there's also the dating sh- <laughs> the dating game killer from the 70s. Lots of murderous men come off of dating shows. Well, to what sign the fuck is wrong with them? What do you mean you're signing up for a show? I'm I, and I'm not saying everyone is not well, but I'm saying to sign up for a show where you're potentially getting married 6 weeks later to yeah. somebody you don't previously know is a little bonkers. It's wild. And I feel like a I lot feel of like I would do it. No, you would not. No, you would not. <laughs> you just said you were the sensitive girl that was staying in the bathroom making up okay. stories. No, no, no. I didn't say I was making up. I said that I can relate to her that she's a little sensitive being. I wouldn't lock myself in a closet. I'd be out of there on a plane. See, that's my defense mechanism is I'll you get in a leave. plane and I'll go and be like, I can't hang out tonight. Mm. But I don't know. Where else am I going to meet someone? All right. Here she is. Love is Blind season three. We'll DM Nick Lachey. I think I don't do it, Morgan. I'm concerned. (laughs) Well, do you have to get married? Yeah, do you? No, but like you do have to be on a fucking like 12 episode show, and this is like a 10 week commitment where you also have to share a life with a person. Well, she's looking, and my grandma said that Morgan isn't in a relationship because she's just too fussy. <laughs> no. She told me that the other day. I said, Grandma, when do you think I'm going to find someone? Because I've been waiting a long time. I don't know about this. And she looks at me and she was like, You're just fussy. <laughs> Nana McAllister. <laughs> well, she's just, I don't think in her day and age, women were so, and I'm not saying not everyone, but I think it was more, you find a man, you have some babies, and yeah. you put up with their nonsense, where people today are like, if it's not the perfect match, it's not for me. I think that, I was talking about this with my friend this weekend, like, there is no such thing as a perfect match, but there is a perfect person that you want to work on things with. So stay mm. fussy. Because the work is incredibly fucking exhausting. Well, yeah, she's in psychology classes. She was interviewing my mom and dad about their marriage just yesterday. I was. Well, compatibility is different than love, kids. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but... And that's why high school relationships always end. Do you think most people stay in love for the entirety of their relationship? So say your mom and dad, they've been together for 30 years. Do you think there's always been... Well, but it loves in different stages. Like, yeah. I think... I don't know. I don't know. I haven't been in a marriage for 30 years. I think there's definitely ebbs and flows and like love evolves and changes, but I don't think you stay in a marriage. Well, I don't think you should stay in a marriage if there is no love because it's like to some degree a palpable thing that if you have children, like that's not a great thing to show them. Right. Well, both of you were nearly married. So would you have married your person in six weeks? No. Oh, I would have. I was trying to marry Joe two weeks in and he Chris was like, you're a yes. crazy bitch. Don't anybody listen to Chris. Chris is a fucking maniac. <laughs> And the most me and Chris are like, yeah, <laughs> no, I would too. But it's like I knew I was gonna marry Joe. Like I just had a feeling. You knew. You just knew. Lizzie oh, told me I she was... hid her headshot under his bed. No, it was under his pillow. And I signed it. Don't get weird. The day after I met him, <laughs> put it under his bed. Broke into his house. So of course you did. If you were on the TV show, people would be sitting on their pod- podcast calling you the crazy bitch. Yeah, but seven years later, I'm fucking married to the guy. But if there was a camera on everyone's life at every moment, everyone would be a villain right. in oh, regards and to I'm something. I'm definitely insane. I'm not saying I'm emotionally <laughs> stable. I'm very fucking unstable, just for the record. But like, also, Chris, you are not allowed to marry anybody in the next five fucking yeah. years. Well, I asked Chris the other day if he would marry me. And he Oh, you can marry Morgan. Oh, Chris Thank is you. gay. Yeah, but you already know. My, my mom said, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> My mom keeps saying that when my husband dies and Shane dies, Rylan and I will get married. I could see that. What? You guys kind of like talk about each other like a married couple almost. Like I'll be texting Lizzie and she'll be like, Rylan, rah, 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 and then it'll be like Lizzie. Rah, 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 rah. But it's like a loving Wait, tone. Wait, I never say rah, 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 about him. So what the fuck are you saying about me? <laughs> Nothing I wouldn't say to your face. That's very true. Well, that's fair. I don't think he talks about people in a way that he wouldn't say to their face. He's pretty upfront and you kind of know how he feels. Well, and that's why I wouldn't get married in six days, because how can you commit your finances, your life, yeah. your living situation? I, I'm not good at change in any regard. I can't decide what I want to do if I'm anywhere because yeah. I'm like, oh, I got to hold on to everything I have because I can't let go of anything because change is too hard. Yeah. So we missed the girl that dumped the guy because he was an atheist. I hated but, uh, her. I she hated was her. awful. She was, she was awful. The wor- She's liked- obsessed with Shane. Yeah, to this she day. She's obsessed with Shane. She's so like, this I wake girl, up, I'm still in love with Shane. Get this. This girl who claims to be like in God's highest kingdom. Yeah. 
she dumped this guy who was madly in love with her what was his name he was no so idea. sweet he was sweet and Super adorable cute and cute yeah. i think when she walked out and saw him he was she was like eh, not my type well so she had to make some shit up but she was like i can't marry you because you're an atheist but she kept dragging him along like maybe maybe yeah literally went to mexico with him but the just for a tiny bit of origin story she was in love with shane but she didn't tell shane she was in love with him so then shane married natalie before he proposed to natalie this girl got proposed to from this guy who we don't know his name so we'll just call him smithy so smithy proposes to her with his mother's ring and Mm -hmm. says no matter what i want to work on this with you like we may have our differences of religious beliefs but i think we can make through it because i love you so much i will he was willing to work on it with her yeah he's like this is my mother's compromise if you will yeah he was ready to compromise and make it work with her she accepts his ring leaves the pod with him goes directly to fucking shane's pod where wants to marry him tells him i should have told you i love you a while ago she literally has this fucking boy's mother's ring in her hand wearing the same fucking outfit she was wearing when he proposed and tells shane i wish you were the one and shane was like you're not it's natalie and then she tries to make it work with this guy who is madly in love with her and she just like won't give him the time of day and then ends up breaking up with him because he doesn't see well it's because she wants shane god in the way she wants she, shane. she wants crazy so ass shane this who's girl, a fucking gaslighting who, psychopath but isn't her whole thing that she's like so religiously moral that she couldn't possibly be with someone that's not as virtuous and holy and valuable as she is as a person yeah she's trying to break up another bitch's marriage yeah how does she, that make well, any sense she's coveting her neighbor's fucking wife i don't think that's in the bible no it's literally Teresa was telling me about the bible the other day and she did not bring that up at all that you can try to like go across seriously i was asking no that's literally against (laughs) one not mother Teresa. like mother Mother Teresa Teresa. came to me in a visit in a vision on a pizza pie (laughs) no but we were asking her about religion and i was like so i don't know she was telling me about the old testament and i don't think that's in there that you should try to break up someone else's marriage no it's literally one of the ten so maybe this girl should not cover that neighbor's wife <laughs> yes <laughs> like it's adultery it's not cool mm. all these mm. girls that are my age are always like men are awful men are awful men are awful i think there's a lot of women that are equally awful yeah i think everybody's awful yeah. i don't think it's a gender-based situation i think everyone's an asshole because i wanted to cry for this poor man and you just yeah. have to choose what kind of awful you're compatible with <laughs> exactly my point that's what i'm trying to say also i mean he was it's easy to identify with smithy because he was a victim of a horrible woman but also mm-hmm. there was that conversation they had where she was like so we're praying at dinner what do you do he goes <laughs> literally <laughs> yeah. sorry if you felt that because <laughs> i felt it and i was like oh rain on me. <laughs> see that's what i'm saying love and compatibility are two different yeah birds well i hope for everybody that watches love is blind this made sense i think that means rylan's done with our conversation yeah yeah to move on. yeah well what time are we at 20 yeah and we still have a euphoria recap oh i'm well, out of here it was a pleasure <laughs> i don't i've never seen that morgan show. well do you have anything you want to tell the class any life updates any revelations you've had you know my life this year has been honestly pretty boring well yeah we've decided we, yeah go ahead oh no you can talk i'm always talking i so we all live in colorado now for the most part and i think what we have decided is is that seasonal depression is a very real thing because (gasps) i haven't lived a winter in colorado for the past six years of my life because i was in hawaii for three of them and then i was in la for four of them so this is my first winter back in colorado and it has been a rough time i I feel like i look physically unwell because of it and then when shane and i are exploring moving there i'm like oh but the winters are gonna be so hard and she's like no they're gonna be great i'm always in and out during the winter and it's fine and none of us are fine my toxic trait is that i love that none of you are fine (laughs) i know we are not fine but maybe that's like because i keep trying to figure out where i'm gonna live i haven't had an actual home for like over a year now i don't know where i live I that's also gotta around. be fucking up your brain it's messing well, up my yeah. brain a little bit and then every boy i date in each different state is like confused <laughs> and i'm also confused so everything is just kind of up in the air and you're a mac daddy you is got like you got mac hose? barbie no you got hoes in different area codes you just said <laughs> oh my gosh well i need hose. to find an area code but i'm thinking maybe i'm just not meant to ever settle down maybe i'll just stay Go for the rest of my life somewhere different well you're renovating a house that you can't live in so yeah. that's like yeah. strenuous because you're financially responsible for a house but you're not occupying the house so then you're floating around while also trying to be 
a woman of your age. Yeah. I'm, I've been floating around for a very long time. I feel like one of the, you know when you get those little dust things in your eye? Yeah. And it's kind of annoying because you can't figure out like where it's coming from. That's how I feel kind of like walking on the planet. That's but, poetic as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, an, I'm a literal eye dust bunny, but yeah. I have been trying to renovate a house and it's never going to be done. They keep pushing it back months and months and months. Right. So the last update I heard, they were like, mm maybe by next valentine's day no, no. no like, are, you oh are you joking are you joking well permits and stuff are a nightmare you can follow along on her journey at morgan mm -hmm. vlogs or is it morgan's vlog i get it's confused morgan's vlogs you type it in you'll figure it out it's two, it's two s's right <laughs> i don't know do you have two s's i only have one s riley yeah. vlogs yeah and yours morgan's is vlogs is <laughs> wow is that like incredible? morgan's vlogs yeah yeah with no apostrophes i'm uninspired Oh no. Well, but here's something that I do need to constantly like make clear to you like you are a very established woman, but you do not feel established because you are drifting between zip codes and beds. But you know, you've opened, you've widened to the dating pool as well because most women only have the state they're in. Yeah. You've got That's Colorado men, true. you've got Los Angeles men, and you just got to pick your poison. <laughs> I feel like you need a like a little a little like inferior man. That just worships the fucking ground you walk <laughs> on. Kidding. Like, honestly. See, but I don't like that. I know. It's not sexy. <laughs> but it, it could be a little sexy. Well, so what are you looking for? Maybe we could start a dating show for Chris and Morgan. I think Chris oh needs gosh, to be single for a really long bachelor. time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chris is off the dating show. We Morgan, what Chris are you looking for? We need to and do like a Utah fucking like find yourself backpacking trip. Like, he needs to walk across America alone and learn what's going on internally. Morgan deserves a great partner right now. <laughs> I mean, okay. you deserve a great partner too, but you deserve to know who you are first. Continue. Well, the last three men I've been out with have all been over 30. Love that which... for you. You don't like it? No, I think I do. But then there's sometimes that I don't. Why? Well, because, okay, then I think about like, okay, my brother's 30. And then she's saying a lot of them, a lot of them seem younger than me. Because when oh. I think about it, I'm like, oh, they're cute. They're fun. They're nice. And then you think that they're like 30. So they're supposed to be mature and right. whatever. And then I realized, okay, my brother is also 30. And these men seem like children comparatively. Yeah. No, my so, husband's 40 and he's a child. Yeah. But maybe a lot of straight men are kind of just like. I think that spirited. there's a little bit of. There's like a stunted. <laughs> <laughs> like just a little bit they're good at what they're good at they're so cute they're so cute <laughs> yeah well i like to think i know what i'm looking for but i change my mind about what i want to do with my life every single day well and i don't know okay. where i'm going to want to live so but, when people are like where do you want to live i'm like i don't know i don't know yeah and i don't know is also like you know that that's something yeah. you know i feel like someone's gonna have to decide for me like i'm gonna find someone and they're gonna say we're gonna live here and i'm gonna be like okay and sometimes when you don't know you still don't know because you were you like were so done with los angeles and now you're but i think it could also be the weather you might still hate los angeles but the weather's like teasing you a little bit and it's like oh because it's teasing me for sure like i was very happy in colorado and then i got here and i was like oh but the weather's nice <laughs> i know <laughs> there's a lot of <sighs> the theme is undecided that's well, I think that's early 20s, no matter what. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Like when I was in my 20s, it's like, oh, God, like. Am I just a big ball of a potential that's never going to amount to anything? I think about that every day. But then I also see half the people in my age are getting married and having children. So then I'm thinking, what's wrong with me? No. How do all these people find these people that want to marry them? I don't understand how that process Couldn't works. tell you. I've never met a single person. I'm like, I want to marry them. Yeah. So how do all these people find these other men? And they're like, you don't yep. want to rush into a marriage though. Like, no. even if it sounds like a good idea, it, I think you should take your time and yeah. really live it out. Really explore people that are different from you. And just like, I would have fun in that because once you do decide it's, it's, over. it's decided. Yeah. And then you're going to be like, That's true. you don't want to look back in 20 mm. years and be like, I wish I would have explored with somebody like this and like this and, no. or that, you know, Maybe you date somebody in New York and go there for a couple of months. I love that. Oh my gosh, you can't plant ideas in my head like that because I will, that's the problem, I will do it. Do it, do but it, then, do it. Raya NYC, I got to, den Raya denied me, <gasps> denied access. I, had a code, I got a code from like Alicia Marie or something. She had like a friendship code that you can share with someone and they denied me. What? Years ago. You gotta try again, that's whack. Cause I was approved. 
I went on. Is that Ra- where you met? Wait, have you no, been dating I was Joe dating- for like twenty years? How are you on Raya? <laughs> so I use dating apps to like promote my short films and then also to fight with people because I don't want to fight with there, my partner. Then I'm gonna run into someone like that that wants me to promote their short film and then I'm gonna be crying in the club all no, night. No, no, no. I would just match with men and I would say before you could start a conversation with me, watch my short film so you know what I'm about. <laughs> And so I would just match with thousands of people and get thousands of views on my shorts. So you either meet that, you meet the Tinder swindler, or you meet the one. Yeah, what Am if I, I the found the Tinder swindler? Okay, what kind of a dumbass would give $30,000 to a man? Well, Morgan. they're emotionally manipulated. His enemies were after him, Morgan. It was for if their a man safety. asked me for $100, I'd be like, red flag. No, the funniest thing is like, damn, man, good luck. Like, sorry about your enemies. Like, ugh, I gotta go. I don't want to date someone with that many enemies. Right? Yeah, that's the red flag in and of itself. Yeah, it's, why do you have so many enemies? You've got so many enemies, you just call them vaguely your enemies? <laughs> it's yeah. too much. It's too many enemies. How narcissistic, too, to be like, my enemies. Yeah. I mean, I do have enemies. <laughs> do you? I yeah. don't know if I have enemies. And for my safety, I'm going to need both of you to give me $60,000. <laughs> I'll pay you back. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm a little red flag popper upper. If someone asked me for a hundred dollars, I would be afraid. Good. First date. You as you should be. I'm like I feel bad because they are victims, sorry. I I'm acknowledging that they're victims, yeah. but I it just couldn't be me. <laughs> Walk it back real I quick. would not write a check for any man. No. You've the got, most you should do is at least is split dinner. Buy a birthday cake. Mm. You've got thirty seconds to exit. Okay. Well oh no 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 like I might give a conclusion. She's oh, saying like you, this is <laughs> about yeah. to I was ready to run. And not because like, we're, no, 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 we're not no, no. done with you. Our camera but the rolls card's out. Gonna roll out. Um, yeah. Peace, love and blessings to all. Don't give men money. Don't date someone after six weeks, especially if their name is Shane with a Y. Red flag. <laughs> if anyone wants to marry me please let me know okay you can go to contact the sip at gmail.com serious inquiries only yeah give us a bio give us a headshot show us a picture of your bank account and if you're oh, is this a dating show or yeah you... oh it really just turned into that yeah it did <laughs> so okay. if you're listening and you're serious and you have what it takes well which you could is... put up a curtain in the middle and then i could talk to them through the curtain and see if i like them yeah We'll probably take it slow. We'll do some Zoom interactions first. We'll interview each before we put them. I was going to say we'll have Chris vet them, but I know Lizzie. All that. Okay. (laughs) See. (laughs) I will marry Chris. Well, thanks for coming on our show. (laughs) Thank you. Bye. We love you, Morgan. Sorry about the cards running out. That's okay. (laughs) Oh, you like my phone case. I really like your whole phone situation. You know, Shane uh, ordered this. This is the phone case Shane uses, and he ordered it for his phone, and the Postmate got the wrong size, so then I benefited from his mistake. Hell yeah. But it's like the, it's an OtterBox with a built-in pop socket, so it never falls off. It's also just so cute. It is very cute. And since I have the blue phone. A baby blue boy. All right, so uh, we wanted to round out the episode with uh, recapping the final episode of Euphoria. Uh, Spoiler alert, starting now, if you are for some reason not caught up on Euphoria by today, which is Wednesday, which is days after the finale aired, you've already, it's been ruined for you elsewhere. (laughs) Don't act like we're the fucking bears of bad news. I will say this is the first episode. Lizzie and I have watched every episode and recapped on the podcast and this is the first time we texted each other before we saw each other for the podcast. I mean I'm wearing black because I'm in mourning. Oh my gosh this episode. How fucking dare they? How dare they? How fucking dare they? Honestly there was a change.org petition going around that nothing happened to Fezco and Ashtray. Arguably the two characters anybody gives a flying fuck about Mm. in a genuine way and look what they did. I cannot believe Big Lips tried to save their shit. Honestly, I might cry through this. Big Lips what turned out to be a fucking hero. Oh my god. I And Ashtray was a fucking hero. <clears throat> and I know that what he did wasn't right. Why do I care so much that these are not real people? <laughs> but that <clears throat> boy lost his life. Oh my god. Saying fuck the police. And just the amount of times that Fez like literally covered in chills right now, Fezco screaming. I'm just like it was very painful and hard to watch just because of the reality of the situation and the situation that ashtray has grown up in and it's just oh man mm. i am my nipples are so hard right now i'm fucking distraught (laughs) 
My, I know it's a weird thing. My nipples get hard when I'm distraught and excited. It's weird. I mean, I just couldn't believe the storyline itself, and I just there's something so pure and amazing the about Fezco l- and Lexi. Yeah, oh, sorry, no, going? keep going. You go there. You go there. Oh, I was just saying. So you get the flashback to Fezco and Lexi leading up to the play in this moment uh, that he was not able to attend, and I just thought, first of all, like Fezco. I think I'm in love with him and his character in the way that even they shot him this episode. I'm obsessed with Fesco. It was so beautiful because they like had his outfit so perfect with the imagery behind him and his blue eyes perfectly lit. And it's just, just, you're seeing this uh, troubled person. um, He's so pure in this episode. Yeah, be so pure. And the fact that the SWAT team tramples on his car, Mm -hmm. Delexi, while they pull him out with a fucking gut wound, which honestly... Those are bad. Gut wounds are bad. Mm. And here's the thing that I've been reading online since the airing, since the incident. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of people feel like what happened to Fesco and Ashtray is such a real world, like, yeah, consequence for an action. And then we're also just going to leave hanging the fact that Rue owes that drug dealing bitch tens of thousands of dollars and was never human trafficked to pay her debts yeah like is that going to come back in season three i would say it must i will say a lot of our concern about the last episode is that we didn't think they were going to be able to tie up a lot of the loose ends and i was i was kind of over the play by the end of the last episode but yeah. i thought the way that the play was integrated into this episode and the way that they tied up a lot of the loose storylines satisfied me enough for uh going into the next season i mean not me i'm get, like watching four minutes of fucking dominic playing the guitar singing a song about friendship like i've met, i've seen this character four times he's a fucking irrelevant I like him. Outsc- I mean, he's hot. I like his character and I like yeah. him, but you're right. The only time I really tuned out during the episode was while he was singing. And then yeah. I thought to myself, wow, I don't even know what the song was about because I tuned out because it was so long. Well, so here's something that I find like I felt like you. I'm like, I'm done with this play. I loved Cassie. Like we talked about last week, mm. like a velociraptor in the in the window, like, <laughs> you know, like her- ready to come like the jello's jiggling as she like walks down the aisle and she's like let's hear it for fucking lightning <laughs> like all that um i wish that had been a little bit more absurd mm-hmm. i did love that maddie just smashes cassie's head into Jesus. the fucking brick wall she's running that girl's like peter ass maddie she deserves that <laughs> i that that's all good fun for me but it almost didn't go there enough for what i was looking for like i was looking for a true carry moment and it all kind of dragged ass for me and the other thing that kind of bumped me is like, again, I've had enough of this fucking play. And until I heard, you know, I, I did watch it on HBO Max this time. So I watched the after show, whatever. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about it. Right. So hearing Sam talk about his thing of like, this was a device because Rue couldn't see her own past unjudgmentally. Unle- uh, so she had to see it through Lexi's eyes to reckon with it mm-hmm. with love and compassion for herself. And that I totally get. Like, like it is really hard to look back on your life without when you're a drug addict without shame for everything that you've done. Like, and that's part of like a program that you work that I work where Mm -hmm. it's you have to do a total inventory of everything that you've done wrong. Right. And you have to tell it to somebody else and then you have to make amends for it. But in order to be super honest about that stuff, like it brings up a lot of shame and a lot of negative feelings. Right. And a shame spiral can lead to a relapse really quickly. And so that shame can sometimes be enough to take a person out. So I do get what Sam's saying there, but I didn't get it until he said it. And I think that's why I'm so irritated with the amount of time we spent on the play. Right. You know what I mean? And she had alluded her character had a few lines kind of addressing that. But I agree. I also wasn't aware of that until yeah. after the episode, which isn't even a part of the episode. Exactly. Um. I did think the Cassie thing was, you were right, she stormed the stage, and I love that they just had her boobs out on full display, and then the guy's just screaming what everyone's thinking, which is, show us your boobs. boobs. And it's... it's Which is one of the funniest things to scream in an inappropriate time, (laughs) and I'm always thinking about that. It's like... (laughs) 
Brooklyn. Show your boobs. Like it kills me. And I, when I was thinking, because I was thinking the same thing right when he screamed it. So I thought it was so beautifully done. And then I thought, oh, wow, we're really objectifying her right now. But they begged for it in the way that they dressed her and shot her storming the stage. Which, by the way, brings me to... Um, there was this article written online about the objectification of the women in the show. And like, since the beginning, I've had a problem with euphoria and what it does to like the, ch- the, the image of a teenager. Like we're seeing their nipples. We're seeing like their full breasts. We're seeing them being fucked aggressively porn star style. We're watching what's supposed to be a minor underage girl having sexual relationships with an older man right. who's learned how to have sex from watching porn, which objectifies women. And it's like, you know, Billie Eilish has talked about this recently where she's like, I watched porn as a minor and it like gave me this absurd idea about sex. And it's like, yes, porn is kind of like changing the sexual dynamic and evolution of children these days. But what's so specifically disturbing about euphoria for me me is that these are adults playing teenagers so it's like we're saying this is what a teenager should look like and for a teenager watching this show which teenagers are watching this show that's mind confounding like that's such a fucked up way to take it in in your own like through your own vision as a child i understand what you're saying but also does that stop them from making the art that they're trying to create like i think I don't think that it does. Well, I how would you fix that problem? You make them less sexualized, but then it's not the show that it is. Like I understand yeah. both. I understand both sides of the argument. Same. But I just don't like if it's not healthy for you to watch. I would say tune out and oh, don't watch. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm not saying that, but it's like such a big part of the zeitgeist that now we're seeing, you know, 15 year old girls wearing pants that don't have sides to them. Right. That's a little much. And but that so, could happen anywhere. That could happen from watching a TikTok. That could happen from watching, and those that could be a real life example, right? But of it, a girl, it you know? really, we weren't seeing these pants on TikTok. We saw these pants on Euphoria, and then we saw these pants on TikTok. I'm not saying with this scenario specifically. I'm saying there's a lot of other trends that came out of TikTok that yeah. were arguably harmful, and that wasn't from something scripted or acted. So I guess what I'm saying is, I appreciate the art. I appreciate the artistic expression, and. This is a show that is made by a man and it's written depicting young girls ideologies and right. and philosophies and thoughts and hopes and dreams and experiences. And like so this is what the article that I read said 16 and 17 year olds do not look like 25 year olds having beautiful fully grown post puberty grown ups playing teenagers not only can lead to body image issues in actual teens it makes it easier for adults to sexualize them. So what I'm saying is the Uh, intellectual comprehension that these are adults changes the way that you view the art so what it takes is like a mind that's capable of comprehending that and making and viewing it in a way that's not toxic and not allowing it to translate to your life in a toxic way do you know what i'm saying yeah which i think it's impossible for kids because when i was a child I fucking love Degrassi. And that's, Degrassi came out on Amazon Prime. I put it on. I'm like, oh, we cannot trust a child's opinion on fucking anything because this is a dumpster fire, horrible show. It's impossible to watch. And I would say it's a tell us all this time in Hollywood, though, like every uh, every show about teenagers. I mean, 95 percent of shows about teenagers are people 25 to 30 playing the yeah. teenagers. So they didn't invent this, but no. they've taken it to the next level for yeah. sure. But I think Hollywood has come a long way with uh, body image, with a lot of these things. And I think it will continue to grow. But I agree with you in that in the damaging effects that it could potentially have. I think Sam has obviously Uh, Well, not obviously, but through the post show things, you can see how much the actors and actresses talk with him about their point of view. Even that song was uh, written by Zendaya. Was written by Zendaya. So while it's written by this man, I think he has hours of deep conversations about how these characters are being portrayed. Yeah. And I'm also, I don't subscribe to you can only write your own experience because, like, I write fantasy pieces a lot. Right. I write monsters' point of views. And I, well, You could say I'm a monster. (laughs) But you know what I mean? Like, I don't believe in that. If you created the story, it's your story to tell. That's that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. Uh, But what I'm saying is for the for the audience, it's the it's the audience's duty and due diligence to intellectualize it Mm -hmm. so that it is not a problem. Do you know what I'm saying? Which is hard to do when. uh, Yes, I understand the problem. Yeah. Percent. And I'm saying he has every right to tell this story. Right. Yeah. And. I'm enjoying it. 
Yeah, I mean, it's... I'm glad we didn't go down the Lori path because that wasn't enjoyable. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, as well as I thought last night's episode was executed and I loved it, it was also not easy to watch. I mean, it was very... So I mean, it was very draining and emotionally draining. And when, once you're invested in these characters, it's just like, oh my gosh. Um, were there any other standout moments that you wanted to talk about? On a lighter note, I loved the mom in the audience trying to shush oh. Cassie. <laughs> that killed me. <laughs> I died laughing. I love her. The dynamic of the two sisters on stage reflecting their real relationship and the mother, I just thought was fantastic. And I am glad that these people made the show. You can tell they're... A, a, all involved really put everything into it. Yeah. There was so much time. This was a life-consuming show for the amount of time I'm sure that it was created. Yeah, no shit they only did eight episodes. Yeah. It, fucking 10 would kill them. And I think the risk that they took in being raunchy and doing all of these things has paid off in a way that... I mean, we've never recapped a show on the podcast. Oh my God, no, this is... we've recapped every episode. Yeah, and so like, I want to like really fucking... like. Give them a round of applause. Oh, let's hope we get the right one. It's always the yellow one. Always the, okay, I know that. <laughs> All right, well, I'm looking forward to the next season. We know there is one for sure. Mm -hmm. There were some interesting opinions on, like, tweets online. So someone said, like, I know, oh, what was the, the negligent homicide of Kat Hernandez. I'd call it a character assassination if the season didn't seem so disinterested in her character. So Kat was sort of thrown out and Lexi was brought in. Yeah, even Maddie's character kind of was uh, thrown out by the end. Like there wasn't yeah. much of an, like it was about Cassie, not Maddie. Yeah. Um, but even more so for Kat. Like, yeah. She really, she got a few good scenes, but really that storyline died afterwards. Yeah. And then here another person said, Lori seemingly dropped her plans to human traffic traffic ruse so quickly and without any explanation either that plot line is coming back next season or it gets buried in the graveyard of unresolved euphoria threads alongside mckay's college career and cat's entire character and i know it's a huge plot line but when you're doing a show of that magnitude and you open so many storylines it's going to be impossible to close all of them or give everyone a conclusion to everything so like I personally wouldn't be so nitpicky as saying like I'm so angry because he he was obviously doing a lot like he yeah. had a lot on his plate. I a know lot it's of spinning a plates. I know it's a big storyline to open yeah. and not finish, but we don't know that he's not finishing it. Right. It's also like this is why TV shows have writer rooms, but I'm not sure that Euphoria has a writer's room. I think he just has these relationships with the cast who build their characters. Like I know Cassie and Nate, who are real people and have real names that I don't remember. Mm -hmm. What are their names? Uh, Jacob Elordi and Sydney Sweeney. Jake and Sid. So Jake and Sid even built out that huge scene where they had that fight in the bathroom. So like, I guess that's part of it. Right. But I do feel like he could benefit from like, let's connect these strings to some degree somewhere. Right. At some time. Because it's distracting enough to pull you from a storyline. Yes. And irritate you when you when they go down, when they open a new book, you know? Yeah, I agree. But I thank everyone for making the show because I thoroughly enjoyed having something feel like an event and yeah. feel bigger than it felt like they shot a movie every episode so it was very fun to consume in real time and the dude sam's goal was that we get invested in these characters and we're excited and passionate about the next season and guess the fuck what here we are and that's what even when people are mad and upset i think for him that's a win because yeah. people are so invested that they want to pick out everything that they think is wrong with yeah. or right with yeah or a plot and it's made a lot of these actors um, very validated in their acting abilities. I mean, it's changing the cultural dynamic entirely. Yeah. On and off the show. People who haven't seen the show know about the show. Oh, yeah. So, and, you know, like, even from the beginning, when your first review was, I felt something watching this. And, like, I was, like, some dumb bitch on the side, like, I felt disgusted. It's like, right, but I felt something. Right. And I cared enough to show up every fucking day, basically. Mm -hmm. So... Wow. Well, we thank you guys for watching our podcast. Oh, yeah. I hope you're invested in our characters <laughs> and are passionately awaiting next week when we continue our story. Well, we don't do stories. When we continue our words. Or continue our words. This episode's so long. I know. I was just going to say I'm a wordle girl now. Oh, my God. This is something we need to address next week. <laughs> you're a wimp. <laughs> I'm a wimp. I am. And that's, that's the, the sip. sip. That's your outro. There it Bye. is. We did it.